Hello, in this video we're going to go over five different methods in evaluating sums. If you stick with me to the end of the video, I'll also give you a bonus method in evaluating sums. Let's get started. The first method of evaluating sums is using geometric and arithmetic sums. So to remind you, geometric sums and arithmetic sums are given by these formulas. The sum of terms of an arithmetic sequence is the average of the first and last terms multiplied by the number of terms. The sum of the terms of a geometric sequence is the first term minus the term after the last term divided by 1 minus common ratio. If you are given an infinite geometric sum, the sum would be the first term divided by 1 minus common ratio as long as the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. I have an example on this technique and I'm going to put the link on the upper right corner of the screen and you can check that out. This is the sum that I have evaluated in that video. The next method is using Taylor series. The way we do that is we relate the given sum with a Taylor series. Before we can do that, we need to remember our formulas for Taylor series. So the key formulas that you need to remember are these five formulas. With the power series for e to the power of x, the Taylor series for sine of x, cosine of x, natural log of 1 plus x, and finally the binomial formula. The binomial formula might be the one that is less common. So it is 1 plus x to the power of alpha equals the sum of alpha choose n, x to the power of n. Keep in mind that this equality holds only when x is between negative 1 and 1 exclusive. Alpha choose n is defined as alpha choose 0 is 1, alpha choose n is alpha, alpha minus 1, all the way to alpha minus n plus 1 over n factorial. And this equality works for every alpha, meaning that alpha could be a negative number, it could be an irrational number even, it could be any number. Here is one example that we can use Taylor series in order to evaluate a sum. And this one is a problem from Virginia Tech Regional Math Competition. And I'm going to put the, a link to the video with the solution on the upper right corner of the screen. The third method is telescoping sum. The idea of telescoping sums is we take the general term of the series and we write it down as the difference between bn and bn minus 1. In other words, we create a second sequence bn that every term of the original sequence is the difference of consecutive terms of that sequence. And here are a couple of examples. The sum of 1 over n squared plus n and the sum of 1 over n choose 3. And I again have the solution to these and I'm going to put the link to the video on the upper right corner of the screen. The fourth method is called swapping summations. So this one applies when you are dealing with double sums. So for example, if you're evaluating the double sum of f of m n, f is a function of m and n, from 1 to infinity for m and n, you can swap the summation and nothing really changes because there is a symmetry between m and n. Now, if you change the dummy variable m and n, you would get sum n equals 1 to infinity, m equals 1 to infinity, and the function becomes f of n comma m. In other words, we didn't really change the double sum except we changed the sum and from f of m comma n to f of n comma m. There are variations of that that you can use. For example, if you are given a sum n equals 1 to infinity, m equals n to infinity, what you can do is looking at these conditions, what we have here is really that m is at least n. So in other words, m can be n or n plus 1 or n plus 2 and so on. Another way of thinking about that would be to say n is at most m. In other words, n can be 1 all the way to m. So by that method, you can swap the summations. And here is an example from a Putnam exam. And I have the solution to this problem, and I'm going to put it on the upper right corner of the screen. The fifth method is polynomial factorization. The way it works is we take our summation or the product, and we relate that with a polynomial. So let's just say you are trying to find sum or products and you relate those with roots r1, r2, all the way to rn of a polynomial. So what we do is we consider this polynomial and then we create the polynomial whose roots are r1 through rn. For example, imagine you are trying to find the product of 2 plus e to the power of i k pi over n, k equals 1 to n. 
What we know is that e to the power of 2ik pi over n are nth root subunity. So we can relate that to a polynomial of the form z to the power of n minus 1 equals 0. And then we go from there. And here are two examples from math competitions. Now that you're with me to the, the end of the video, I'm going to give you a bonus method in evaluating sums and products. And that method is what we call two-way counting. The way this method works is that we take our sum and we create a set that gives us the sum. Then we count the elements of this set in a different way that gives us a simpler answer. And therefore, these two must be the same. And I have a video on several sums that I use uh, the two-way counting method to evaluate. So please check those out. And the link is on the upper right corner of the screen. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel where you can find more videos like this. And I will see you in another video.